Okay, um, we are here, uh, we were originally going to go over police, but obviously the police budget wasn't ready. So, um, as I mentioned, I got it about uh, an hour ago, and I'll have to take a look at it and input it. So right now we're not going to have anything on police. Um, I did want to share with you a couple quick things. Um, uh, the uh, Hoffman equipment agreed to the 25720 figure. Okay, and what that's going to mean is, is that we're going to have a check prepared for them for next bills and claims. I told him he'd be getting it um, by probably the 20th or so, around that date. He also said that they will help us. He called the insurance company and mentioned to the insurance company that the hourly set aside was half of what it should have been. The insurance company seemed to understand that maybe there was a mistake made. So we might be able to also receive a claim, uh, an increase in our claim amount from the insurance company um, for the difference. Okay. So we net could maybe at you know five, six thousand dollars off of what the total bill would have been. So with the hydraulic repairs and everything, maybe this whole episode ends up costing the village maybe eight or nine thousand dollars, including the repairs to the machine. So I would say that's probably a good you know, end game from what we were doing. Okay, so um, so just wanted to uh, square everybody on that. Real quick before you go on the next thing, are we five hundred one C three? Are we what? Are we five hundred one C three? Well, who's the way? village? The village? Well, it's not. I don't think it's looked. Yeah, it's, we're not. It's not looked that way. As that. Okay. But we. Um, have some of the same benefits. Yeah, for the fourth, for the fourth of July. Tax exempt. Someone just asked me, I just want to make sure so I can respond to my apologies. Hmm. Are we able Their to? Their donation is fully tax deductible. That's probably what they're concerned with. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. As long, yeah, as long as it's written to the village or an approved group that is backed by uh, the village. Well, even an approved group, they become a supported organization of the village Correct. in order to get that tax deductible. Which is what the 4th of July committee is. And the check is. still right. has but to be made out to us, not to them. Yeah. No. Fran is planning on doing the 501c3, but she's saying that some of the stuff that we're trying to do as a whatever, in this pally or not, uh, doesn't fall under what a 501c3 does as far as benefits, which is why she's doing the 501c3 for the senior center. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering what the difference is that we don't have. That's a legal question. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay. I don't want to just tell you something because I don't have all the No, I'm all good. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, next thing that came up um, is probably something we'll talk about in the executive session. But there is a water customer that is well in arrears um, for uh, payment. Okay. You got to pass that around. Um, recommend that the board probably considers taking some type of action before you go way, way past the... Uh, they've been terminated as far no, as service goes? No, no, that's something you guys would have to uh, oh. determine, okay? We can do that tonight. I have no problem moving on that. That's out of control. Yeah, this is... This is I, I move we, I move we terminate, that, I move yeah, we terminate okay. the water tonight. Are we? It's not water, though. Sewer. Sewer. But we, we go right back to the same thing we always... This was had. a discussion that happened like eight months ago. Yeah. Well, a little longer. Yeah, right. We were gonna shut. We, yeah, we should talk about this in a second. Yeah. Okay. Just, I didn't want to mention names. I just want to say this yeah. is something no. that you're. This is growing it's to routine. an amount where it's going to be hard to collect yeah. Yeah. at a certain point. Okay. Yeah. Special user. So yeah. you don't have as you don't you have different ways of getting that money, not necessarily through tax levy. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, next. Uh, I'm working on um, the bond scenario. What I want to understand is, and we'll talk about fund balance a little bit when we go into the statements, but I, I want to get some guidance as to whether there is a um, support from the board about trying to pay off the street reconstruction bond that is has to be paid by next March. The 250000 Yes. Yeah. I, I definitely want to do it. Uh, I, I would rather bring down a couple of other line items. Well, what I'm going to try to do is not necessarily 
the line items are going to come at a different issue. I want to pay the remainder of the right. bond in a lower amount. Right. Okay. Then, um, Hi. is there somebody trying to come yeah. in? Can I have a minute later on? Yeah, you want me to call you? It won't be like an hour. You need something right now? I just two forms signed for the military. Okay. Let me do that while you're, I'm still right here. Do you know Mario, Sco Mario Scalaro? Hello. Oh, hi, Charlie Murphy. Mario is actually putting together a freedom ride for the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been doing a lot of work. I apologize. I apologize for the interruption. Okay. All right. Well, while you're while you're doing that, um, so the idea is going to be to get um, to utilize our uh, bond payment to pay off reconstruction and the water and sewer debt to pay off very little, if anything. I'm going to work with uh, Noah on the determination of what he believes the creditors would be comfortable with. And um, and then we would pay out uh, the street reconstruction part of the, the uh, debt, which is really the only part that has a five-year hard date that has to be paid. Okay, so I just want to get a feeling that you guys are good with that approach because that's the way I recommend we go. And this way, um, we're going to tap into our fund balance for this year because of a lot of other things. But I'll soften that a little bit after when we talk about the performance of 2014 and what happened with fund balance there. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be uh, an issue. Um, the revenue side, I'll be able to uh, have more information in there for our next meeting. Um, we do have to discuss uh, non-union salaries, what the uh, um, position of the board is as far as an annual increase for non-union positions. And, and then I'll have some guidance as far as um, the cap and what we're going to be looking at there. I should have that sometime, probably second meeting the next week when I plug all the numbers in. Uh, and then other than that, I think we've covered most of the items on the budget. And it seems to be tracking close to last year okay, with some of the changes up and down that you guys have, have done. Okay. So that's um, that's the budget. Any questions? Any anything else that uh, that comes to mind? And really, our biggest item is the police. John's curious about uh, the road work. Um, where do we stand with MERNs and remaining dollars from storm damage? Cornell Fusco. Uh, <coughs> he's been in contact with the OT as well as um, the, the specific people that are holding the money. Uh, he seems to think that we're in good shape to get it. We're not going to get all of it. It's been dwindling over the years, given taking from it. Uh, the exact amount he didn't have for me, and again, it's going to have to be specific areas uh, for us to justify using the money. Um, but was it Learns one of those areas? Not. Some of the area, I'm, I'm going to let Al do what Al does. Um, Right now, there's two. I, I already talked to um, I talked to Scoofus and I, I put a message to um, Senator Larkin to push the DOT issue along. Uh, there's two different issues with the South End of Merms, and that is the money that we don't have from DOT, but also the uh, drainage on 9W that has eroded and is now flooding the South End of Merms houses when there's a heavy rain. Um, it's not an issue. Some of the residents thought it was an issue with people doing work in the back of their property. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that there is no all up on Mount Avenue is just a little gully. It's gone. So it's coming right off and hitting them. There's a, there's a small amount of residual projects with state DOT in the capital fund. I want to say it's somewhere in the 70, 80,000 range, if I recall. We'd have to look at that. But those are established projects right. that are still kind of being evaluated and done. By DOT or by us? They're, they're, they, Pat Patterson was originally working on this stuff. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but there are, I think there are three projects. Uh, Gina, correct me if I'm wrong. There are a couple outstanding projects, and um, there was a bunch of paperwork going back and forth. I really don't necessarily have a direct handle on 
on what's going on with those projects that would be, I guess, DPW. One of them is the one the liaison is to DPW. I don't remember any of them. Well, one of them is the one you just um, authorized to go out to bid was the catch basin, and then there's the catch basin down by the DPW. Correct, and then I know one of them still outstanding. I believe is the wall work down by um, behind the town hall, and That's Highland not done Brook yet. wall. There were three sections, and okay. I think that section was done. There were still a couple others. And um, the third one, I can't, off the top of my head, I don't remember. Well, that's three. The DPW cash base and the wall behind Town Hall. Well, the no, that, well, that no, behind the Town Hall, so that was like one section that they did do. There was two others of that Highland Brook wall. Gotcha. And so the third one, I'm not sure. So all that money is to fund these three projects? Is, is that from the DLT? Is that the one that's... We have, some, we have some of those funds in the capital fund. It's not a lot of money, but those are outstanding projects that are waiting on completion. Well, we, just, we just approved I don't, the I, I don't project. really have who's shepherding all of that, but I'm just aware that it's in the capital fund. I believe Al is, is shepherding it. Is he aware of all those projects? Because last The catch basin, yes. The other one, I'm not sure. Yeah, he's he's aware of what's going on at Merns, but I don't know if he's aware of what behind Town Hall. Yeah, so and that's Merns, something we'll have to talk about. Yeah, the Merns is right. not. Um, that was told. That was the... Sue Kelly money. Right. Yeah, these are some of this is old stuff. That's the other two are FEMA. Yeah. And, and I don't know why it wasn't able to be used. I don't, I don't know uh, what. Yeah, Sue Kelly money is like, what, eight years ago? Oh, six. Ten, 2000. Eight years ago? Yeah. So, you know, you're talking about a long time ago. Um, so yeah, so that's that, and then there, um, I'm going to be trying to make heads or tails. There's some residual um, capital fund money that relates to um, the water tank slash sewer projects and so on. Because remember, we were getting FEMA money, then we had to return FEMA money, then we got insurance money, then we did bonding, and we do have some residual money there that I have to uh, determine which bucket it actually goes into. And then it will be, I will recommend to you guys to probably use it to pay the debt, if that's what it turns out to be. I can't just sit there and say there's, you know, 200000 in capital fund. You know, you guys can use it on something. It has to be, it either has to go toward the project, or if the project's complete, it has to be used for debt repayment. Perfect. means you didn't use all the debt. money. Yeah, we like paying that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's good, except you got to be a sleuth to figure out where, yeah. what happened yeah. where. The beautiful thing is, the beautiful thing is, you got this cracker jack treasure that's <laughs> yeah, you know, doing. That's always Thank the Lord. Bus call, man. That's <laughs> right. So there's worse problems to have. Yeah, Let's put it that way. Um, okay, so that's pretty much what I have for the budget so far. Um, I'd like to go into our 2014 performance, so we can just do a little discussion and give you a little framework as to how well the board did um, in 2014 with spending, which I already brought up, but now we have the facts. I wanted to check one fact. I think I remember you saying that our debt service, the cost of our debt, is 12% of our overall annual budget? Uh, I don't recall what I told you, but I can give you pretty close as far as what you're paying in, in, in your in debt, that, I might have told you that a long time ago because I'm slightly remembering this now. <laughs> yeah, and I think you said our I debt think I is, calculated it. I just is 121% of the annual budget, <laughs> which is sort of scary. Okay, you're looking at uh, your total serial bonds are about 300,000, 320. Um, 900,000 your total and that's for all funds so your um, your budget's uh, overall budget is about uh, 4.6 point let me find the budget oh, 
Yeah, your overall budget sitting at six point five. So nine hundred thousand is about one seventh. So seven times fifteen is one oh five. So yeah, about fourteen, thirteen, twelve percent. So if anything, twelve percent is a low ball estimate of it's the probably it's in about in that range. Again, I'm you know, I'm just rounding right now. If I calculate, I could probably I could give you an exact, but you're probably looking at about 12 to 15 percent is your debt debt amount that you're paying. Now that's your total debt, and we'll go over that in the statements. Your total debt you're slowly chipping away at, obviously with the with the payments. But in 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 the serial bonds you're chipping away, in the bands you went up because of the tank uh, tank painting. And, and those things related to that. Okay? All right, so let's go into the financial statement for the year ended May 2013, I'm sorry, 2014. And there is a management letter that we're, we were provided with that kind of gives us a, a rundown of what Nugent and Hausler felt uh, as far as how we do business. Um, basically, uh, well, to, to cut through this relatively quickly, significant audited, audited findings, they give you a list, okay? So they say, they go into the accounting practices, this is on this paper right here, okay? That's, you got that right there, Pat. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so they basically say that uh, management, uh, if you go into the paragraph at the bottom, that the uh, OPED benefits, which is your GASB 45 health, long-term health benefits, um, that the uh, that the numbers seemed reasonable and uh, that they were okay with. You go to page two, we encountered no significant difficulties when dealing with management. Any misstatements that were there were looked at as being non, not necessarily material and anything that needed to be corrected was corrected uh, in a uh, reasonable and quick fashion. Um, there were no disagreements with management when they went through the audit. You know, that's a good thing. Um, representations uh, that management uh, made uh, is in a letter that I gave them that basically says that everything that we're, we're putting out is transparent, uh, as uh, detailed and correct as we possibly can do it. Uh, not to say that a mistake can't be made, but they would not be, if they were a mistake, they would be that, not necessarily anything purposeful. So that's what they're saying there. Um, we have the right to consult with other independent accountants, and I do take advantage of that to make sure that we are uh, doing everything so that when the audit does come through that we don't have anything that creeps up on us that could be material. Um, and then they discuss the issue of uh, any other uh, findings or issues, and they said the professional relationship is, uh, is good, they had no issues. So we go to page three, and they talked about um, other comments. Uh, they talked about the capital fund uh, had a deficit fund balance of about $1.4 million. That is essentially all ban uh, money because ban are not bans are not considered permanent financing, so they don't fall under permanent financing. So they're looked at as a, um, a deficit fund balance. Nothing alarming there. Once Either the money gets paid back or goes into a serial bond, that number goes back to zero uh, or somewhere around there, depending on what other, what other, what other activity is going on. <clears throat> um, so that will change in March? Uh, well, no, that will not change because what's going on is we want to maintain bands so we can maintain a low interest rate. Because if we go to a serial bond, the oh, fees sir. go up and you're looking probably at three percentage points for long-term debt. Right now, the way the financial uh, facilities are out there, it's in our benefit to stay with short-term debt because we can get much better rates. If the Fed and borrowing agencies start to change the interest rates and they start to creep up, then we would maybe have a little different uh, situation and then maybe want to lock in long-term long uh, facilities. <clears throat> Um, they talked about the reviewing projects that exist. A lot of these projects are, um, some of them are older, some of them are not. 
there, some of them have deficit fund balances. I did review a couple of them, like the Grit Chamber, Eagle Valley. If these projects are done, we just need to get them to uh, figure out why they're either zero balance or if they in fact have funds in them that we uh, do something with those funds because they're not going, they, they just sit there. So in one case, I think we had a deficit of 10,000 and a, and a, and a uh, positive of 10,000. We could pretty much just clean all those up and get it to zero. Okay, that's something that has to be worked through the year, nothing material there, uh, other than just cleaning it up. Um, back reconciliations, there was one check that came up that <clears throat> was voided, but it didn't uh, get captured in the system and it created a, uh, an accounting issue as far as uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Um, and we had to do that was for JAT contracting. A check was issued to them, and then it was voided, and another check was issued. It created a little bit of an issue. Uh, not that anybody uh, vendors got extra money. It was an internal accounting issue that needed to be reversed. All right, so that's uh, that's on the journal entry page on the back. Um, <clears throat> adjusting journal entries, approval of adjusting journal entries not documented. We're going to make sure that it's clear that all adju adjusting journal entries are either approved by me or um, by, by the board through me, okay? It's just that uh, we, we, we make adjusting journal entries. We try to make sure everything goes to the board and you guys approve everything and, and just have to make sure the paperwork keeps up with that. Uh, <clears throat> the do to, do from is an end of the fiscal year item. Uh, they would just ask us if we could um, make sure that our do to do funds if we if the bottom line is if we lend money from one fund to the other right. the state essentially says that by the end of the fiscal year it should be paid back okay sometimes what happens is is like in the water fund it inadvertently maybe doesn't get paid back and it gets paid back the month after into the new year uh, off state comptroller would like to have all borrowed money paid back within the same year that they're lent out okay and that's something that we'll uh, make sure we pay attention to. So we can do that this year? Yeah, we should do that every year, but sometimes what happens is at the end of the year, if things get a little chaotic, yeah. it's messed. It's not that they don't get paid back, but it's just a time frame. It doesn't stay in the same year. That's one time we had to have a special meeting, so we have it done in time. So it is. Yeah. So overall, uh, in my discussion with, um, with Nugent and Hauser, they seem very happy with everything that they looked at. Uh, they didn't see anything that uh, was uh, alarming to them or problematic to them. Um, they felt that uh, they, you know, they, they thought that the village was doing the things that they needed to do and would like to continue to be of service to the village. And I mentioned to them that obviously the board would take that up going forward, but I seem to be satisfied with their performance as far as what they were giving us. So that's pretty much that in a nutshell. Okay. Now this management letter is really for the board. <coughs> um, certainly. Uh, to what level of confidentiality you want, uh, it's, uh, there's, again, there's nothing there that, that uh, I would be concerned about. Um, and there are some good suggestions that we could do to even be more uh, superbly accurate than what we're doing. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to go into the audit itself. And I want to highlight just a couple of important things that I do <laughs> noteworthy to talk about. So we just have to flip pages, Mr. Mayor. Okay, the first couple pages just talk about what they're responsible of doing, uh, standard uh, uh, language. And then we go to page four, and it talks about financial highlights. Okay, so it says here, the assets of the village exceeded its liabilities at the close of fiscal year <clears throat> by 4 million nine oh eight. Uh, to four million seven seven uh, seven one five. Um, that's a good thing. It means that our revenues exceeded our liabilities, and we weren't dipping into our savings account to pay for ongoing activities. Uh, revenue increased by four hundred nineteen thousand, and this was uh, primarily due to real property taxes and sale of property and compensation for loss. Compensation for loss could be uh, insurance and things like that. <clears throat> at the close of the fiscal year, the government funds reporting at, reported ending fund balances of 11500 uh, And that's a total 
fund balance. That's not uh, uh, so. That's when you look at the specific fund, which the the one that we're most keyed into is our general fund balance. This is a aggregate, so it's a, it's not necessarily the best number in the world to be able to decipher what's going on. <clears throat> The total uh, unassigned fund balance for the general fund was 519,508. Okay, now add on to that the 240,000 we allocated for this year, and until the end of the year, your fund balance is touching eight, around almost $800,000. Okay? But we don't anticipate all that. Correct. <laughs> this year, you will be dipping into your fund balance, and we talked about the reasons why. Um, many of them were inherited issues that you guys dealt with, okay? But the, the key thing is, is that for this year, your fund balance uh, is still relatively healthy at a minimum of 12%, okay? All right, so now we go... Uh, debt debt. Well, you have enough uh, real property here that you're you're good risk, which is why they lend at half a percent. Okay. All right. So now uh, we're going to flip pages, and we're going to go into page eight. And this just this just table just kind of gives you a rundown of your total assets and your total liabilities and with the net change in that. And again, it's a positive overall net position of almost $200,000. Okay, page nine <clears throat> goes into a breakdown of what you spent your money on. And it shows you where your revenue came from as far as your property taxes, your uh, federal and state aid. Uh, as you can see, we got a lot in 2013 of state aid. And in 2014, we didn't get anywhere near the amount, and we still did well as far as overall performance. So we're not reliant on outside factors, let's say, to do business. Huh? Yeah, FEMA, you know, relative uh, federal aid. Yeah, federal is mainly FEMA. What did we get from ships? The total? I, I don't have that in front of me. It's quarterly. So, yeah. I think it was somewhere around 40, but I don't know. It's not 25, it's better than that. Oh, good. I was thinking we always like budget 20, 25. But <laughs> yeah, I think it was 40. Do you, do you recall, Gina? Somewhere around there, oh. yeah. Um, your expenditures, basically, where you see your big increase in expenditures are two main things. It's actually four main things, but I will call it two that are the ones that are most um, prevalent, and that is 22% in health costs and uh, employee benefits of 7%. Those are the big. Those are the big ticket. Some of the big ticket. Well, actually, the health thing is a little misnomer, so skip that. Um, you really, when you look at the expenditures, it's largely your employee benefits at 7%. And your debt, your interest on debt at about 12.2. Okay, next page, just a pie graph on what you spend your money on. If you look, uh, your revenue, most of your revenue comes from property taxes and charges for services. And then after that, um, for 2014 to 13, you see that you got a little less property taxes. Uh, you got a little bit more in services. Okay, so that's just telling you what's there. And then your expenses are the next pie, pie chart. And what do you guys think is the most costly expense? Fully benefits. Payroll. Okay, so payroll is your biggest slice of the pie. And if you look, you went up about a percent and a half in employee costs from 13 to 14. Okay. So the orange area is actually employee salaries, not just it's, benefits. Yeah, it's everything. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Some of these again. Some of these charts are kind of uh, replacements. Just uh, same thing, just put in a different setup. Okay. 
All right, so then you can look at page 13. Well, oh, I, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, here it has interest on debt as only 3%. Yeah, that's, that was a lot. Is that that's interest on the debt. That's not your total payments. Oh, you have principal okay, so not being Just, principal. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we go into uh, page 13, and here they basically you're looking at your um, your governmental funds and your your fund balance as assigned, unassigned. The reason why water and sewer are restricted is because they can only be used for those funds. They can't. You can't. I know this question came up before. Can we use money in the water department to help pay the general fund? And the answer is no. And it's a restricted amount. Community development is kind of sits on its own. Uh, you know, it's a federal program. You're getting money there, and you go back and forth, but you do have a small fund balance there. Okay, 14, and again, as we go through this, I'm going to skip over stuff because some of it's just a, a reorganization of the amounts in a different chart. Um, community development. What can we spend that money on? Uh, your Section 8 program. Oh, that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, 14 again, just the highlights of where your revenues are and where your expenditures are. Capital assets, page 15. Okay, basically it gives you a rundown of where your uh, your capital additions are, what things are worth your infrastructure, things that you did improvements on, your land, and just breaks it down. Um, about a half a million dollar increase in overall value. Okay. Debt administration, this is where you can get your solid number of how much debt you have. Now, one of the things I want to cautious, caution you on is that when you do total debt, your OPED, your compensated absences kind of get pulled out because those are future debt related to personnel. And that's where your GASB 45 audit comes from. So basically, you have a $2 million debt in hospitalization support and other uh, benefits. Um, from retired employees and current employees that will retire at some point. And that is jumping quite high. It's every municipality in the state has the same problem. And to be honest with you, I think the only way that this is all going to get paid for is by printing money. <laughs> Realistically. It can't be fixed. It's but the debt that you really want to pay attention to is your uh, overall um, bonds and bands. And your bonds and bands get you to about eight million dollars. So when you look at your overall costs, you're looking at about eight million dollars in total debt. Your total serial debt has decreased about three hundred thousand dollars because you've been paying it off. Your uh, bond anticipation notes have went up about $500,000, but again, that was largely related to your water department debt, which was something that was put off for a long time, and you're dealing with it now. So your overall village debt currently is about $8 million, which for a village of size is high, plain and simple. Yeah. It's high. Okay. Um, I believe our constitutional tax limit and our debt limit is somewhere around, I think we can go up to $24 million in debt before we reach our limit. What the happens legal that? Then they, they come in and take care the of state, The state uh, yeah. puts you, so you under serious, serious, serious yeah. stress. Yeah. Serious stress. Yeah, it, it's also lenders are going to be yeah. reluctant to lend money. Did it, that impact our, our rate of borrowing? Yeah. No, because, you're, because the village's bond rating went up. Yeah, yeah I know. But, but, you would think that this would have some influence. On um, that, that rate. It would if they didn't if they didn't feel that there was a good debtor that 
will pay it off. Yeah. See, municipal debt is relatively solid because they know that the taxes will continue to be there. The and revenue stream is there. But I mean, so they you, weigh the fiscal yeah. management of the municipality? Yeah, the, the ba bankruptcy's a very far cry. Like a private company bankruptcy is real. Uh, very rare do municipalities go bankrupt because what they look at is they look at all your land that you have. It's all sellable. But if you got up to close to your limit, let's say you're $20 million in debt, well, I have to file a constitutional debt limit with the state and right. they start to uh, discuss with us our would, debt problem. Would that impact your borrowing rating at that point? Oh, as it gets higher, yeah, it would. Yeah. yeah, I believe it would. Again, it's all dependent on how the lender sees it. Do they yeah. see that the probability of paying it is there? Do they believe that the probability of the locale can handle it? Um, you know, you are living in New York, there are higher incomes, and you're probably going to factor a lot of that in. I, I don't really, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure there's a direct number answer to that. I think it's set, uh, a spoke of issues that they look at to determine the, the viability of a borrowing. Is this number high compared to other villages like yeah. us in the county? Yeah. For the size. Substantially? Yeah. They, they, look, Goshen, Go, Goshen right. the village of Goshen has like a $25 million debt. But 20 of it is because of a sewer, I believe it's a sewer plant, boondoggle had happened. And after they had to, rip, they bought a piece of property to put a sewer plant on it. It was completely, I understand it was completely like brownfield. And they had to spend all this money to remediate, remediate it and then okay. still build the plant. Okay. And it was like a $20 million okay. hit. And the taxpayers, the sewer, sewer bills, something, something, someone's telling me sewer bills went up like 250% or something like that. So uh, it was, you know, bad, bad decisions. If not for Goshen, we would be the highest debt. Is that right? Proportion. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly we'd be the highest, but we'd be up in the highest. Okay. In the county. In the, the county. county. Not in the state. Not in the state, yeah. yeah. In the county. In the county. Top, top, I can we were second. reasonably say top we were second. three. Under Goshen. Okay, that's what no, I'm saying. No, just, just to, to put it in perspective, so, you know, so yeah. I understand yeah. what. For total dollars, we were second? Two years ago. In, in a in a uh, comparable with population, you got a factor of population per capita. All right. Um, so, but you're you're making the right decisions and the right moves, and you're in the right direction. And the auditors felt that that's what they saw, and you're and you're performing. Okay. Okay, next page, a statement of net position again. Just runs through all of the um, amounts that we uh, have spent, our total assets, liabilities, and then you get your net, net position. Okay, remember, your liabilities and net position added together have to equal your assets. That has to balance out. So if you add those two bottom numbers together, you'll get the asset number. And the restricted and unrestricted is your fund balances and uh, negative fund balance. Okay, uh, let's see. Page 19 is next. Okay, page 19 uh, is your balance sheet, government balance sheet. And uh, it will, again, give you a nice snapshot of your assets, liabilities, and fund balances. And if you look at your liabilities, your main liabilities are your capital projects and uh, your total government funds are uh, at the end there, gives you your spread. So if you look at the spread, your water department has a 307,000 restricted fund balance, your sewer has a 270-ish thousand. And your total fund balance for the uh, current village right now for the A fund, general fund, is about 760, almost 800,000. Okay. Um, so what it showed you is, is that not only did you 
have more revenue than spending, but you didn't touch the fund balance allocated from for 2014, which was about $249,000. So you were able to not spend that money and uh, leave another, I think it was around 19000 on the table. So you spent uh, about 265000 less than you were originally planning the way it was budgeted with tax receipts and fund balance allocations. Wow. So that's good. Yeah. Um, where is the, well, the unassigned 853000 Which were you looking at? Um, under fund balances, the mm -hmm. negative 853 Yes. How do we get to that? Number? Because you have your, your, your capital projects is looked at as a deficit. That's your bands. Okay. So that throws the number off because it's not permanent financing. So it's looked at as debt. But it's looked at with short-term debt. It counts against your savings. But, but everybody that understands the accounting side of this knows that you are borrowing money and it's for specific infrastructure. If this was serial, if, if you turn this into a serial bond, this would not show up there. It's just the way that they have to account for it. Okay, so what the, what the numbers you really want to look at are your uh, assigned and unassigned fund balances. And in the case of your special funds, you're restricted because they're restricted to those funds. Okay, so if you, when, when you want to start putting your fund balance policy together, you want to discuss, well, is it going to be 25%, 30%? Uh, if you look at the water department, water department's about 750000 800000 annual. So 30%, so about a third of that. Your fund balance in the water department is, uh, is good. It's getting better. Okay? The, 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 the bigger issue with the water department is just your operating costs in the, during the year. And that you solved with your increase in rates. Well, operating in you know, some of the infrastructure, like the pipes. Yeah. And remember, I, I didn't allocate uh, in the budget last year any fund balance from water or sewer on purpose because I felt that the operating expenses needed to pay for the yearly costs and not to subsidize it with the savings account. Okay. Sewer department. You're looking at on a million one. You're looking at that it's sitting around 25 percent. Okay, so ultimately both of those funds are, I feel, getting better. And uh, my recommendation this year with the sewer and water is probably not to use fund balance for the, their budgets either. <clears throat> And the way you have your manpower set up in those departments, you really do have um, a, a decent situation because you don't have as many people in those departments. The only issue that you have is you have uh, probably more overtime than you really want in those departments. But functionally, the revenue is uh, supporting the operating expenses. Uh, <coughs> now that you've increased the water rates. And I'm seeing that now too because like right now, I believe the water fund has, you know, I made a print out of that. The water fund I think has 167,000 remaining before the May bills. Um, so you have two months, 167,000 might get you to the finish line and then you'll start getting revenue in. So we might be able to with the increased revenue from water, we might be able to um, make it to May without having to borrow from the sewer department, right. which would be nice. That would be which is the goal. Time. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that was the intention. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Normally at this time last year, I, I was looking at this going, we're going to have to, we were probably below 100,000 if I recall. So we were, now mind you, you're having more customers out of the town too, and that's helping this yeah. bottom line number, okay? So just the main point I'm making here is you're making the decisions that are gonna shore up your financial activities in these departments. 
and you'll be able to go down the road where you'll have more confidence that these departments are financially working properly. Okay? All right, so that's uh, page 19. All right, so next page is uh, 21. And again, the, uh, the thing to look at here is, is that you just you see all the different revenue sources. You see all the different uh, um, expenses. And then you get your net overall change in net assets, which is about 19000 And that's where you get your, your original fund balance was at 740. And then with the 19000 addition, you went to 759. And we're taking 240 off of that, which puts you at the 519 number, because we set aside that 240 for this year to help shore up our costs. Okay. So that's pretty much what I wanted to go over on there. Okay, uh, page 24 just goes into Summary of Significant Accounting Policies. Again, a lot of this just talks about the standard stuff that they expect, uh, the way the financial statements are presented, um, the different funds that, that exist. It's all kind of terminology so that you can understand the statement a little bit better. Okay, so we can kind of just flip through a lot of those. It's a little bit of a sleeping pill, so. No. Okay, good. Uh, page 31, talk about employee benefits. Uh, it says here, during the year, approximately 200000 was paid from the general fund on the behalf of 18 retirees. So when you take that out, your retirees cost you about 10, a little over 10 grand a piece. Okay. People forget about that. They forget yeah. about the costs of retired employees. Not that they're not entitled to it, but when you formulate your budget, there are ghosts that used to be here, that used to work here, that contributed to the village that now you still have responsibilities for. Now, we see the vouchers for, I think, 1600 I think that's for health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, Medic I think the, you're talking about the Medicare uh, reimbursements? Yeah, how frequently do we pay those? Do we do that Yeah, Medicare reimbursement. I think it comes to be three something per uh, per retiree. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, by the the I guess maybe the good part of that is is that they're not fully on the health plan. Yeah, true. They're now getting uh, Medicare. So the only other saving grace is is that the retirement system is state. So once they're in the state yeah. retirement system, your obligation really is whatever the state's PFRS and ERS contribution requirement is. Okay? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, keep moving along. We're almost done. Okay. Uh, page 33 just talks a little bit about your funds statements and your restricted. explains to you what restricted means. A couple years ago, the um, uh, I think it was 10 years ago, Office of State Comptroller grew the uh, uh, classification of uh, fund balance to these categories before it was uh, assigned and unassigned. Now they've got a lot of these other categories. Okay, page 34, just some, uh, again, some. explanations on how things are done. Interfund activity, remember we do interfund activity to make sure that the other departments that are getting contributions from one department to another that they pay for it. You guys in the budget this year talked about helping that, like the insurance allocations and so on. Um, makes sense. But doesn't, you know, it, it takes getting into the tax cap world to start to look that deeply. 
and start to figure out, geez, you know, we need to make sure all departments are paying their fair share. Okay. Appreciation, they just talked about capital assets depreciation. Again, just if you're interested in it, you can read it, read it a little bit more. Your pension plans on page 41. If you notice, the contribution levels went up. There's about a three to four year lag between what goes on in the economy and what the pension contributions happen. So the stuff that was going on in 2009, you were starting to feel in 2012 and 13. And that's where you see that big jump up in ERS and P PFRS. ERS is Employee Retirement System. PFRS is your Police Fire Retirement System. So you can see a relatively almost a $32,000 jump up between 12 and 13. Now that's going to start to settle down um, in, the, in the upcoming year, so you won't see as, as big of a bite there. But the pensions are guaranteed, and uh, if the market or whatever it's uh, invested in doesn't perform as anticipated, which a lot of the actuarials are saying 8% return on investment annually, Personally, I don't know how they get that number. I think that's very high, but um, if the 8% isn't gained by the market or the fixed income, guess who's paying it? Taxpayers. That's the number they selected to use this year, 8%? No, they, that's, that's, their, that's their actuarial tables uh, for the next several years. Okay. I think they actually talk about it here somewhere. So that's going up, you're telling me that? Uh, not recently. I think it's been in that area for several years, but I just personally feel like no, but I mean our contribution based upon oh, our contributions have been going up yeah. because of the lag. Yeah. Now they should start to settle down a little bit. I don't have the sheets in front of me, but the but the the ones for this year are, I believe one went down. If I recall, I have to look at it. Though. But it's not as dramatic as it was from 2012 and 13. Okay. They talk about short-term debt, and they did a schedule on page 42 of our short-term debt. And that's where you get your 1.757 uh, million advance payable. And the reconstruction of roads, after we pay off this year, uh, I believe it comes down to, um, I think it's 277, 280, 280 in, that, in that area. I think we allocated 50000 for that bond. Okay, so that's, that's what we have to make a determination on what we're going to do. Let me see what we allocated. I think it was 50000 Yeah. So street reconstruction, we put 50000 for that. So that's going to go down to uh, 287 So that's what we're going to have to consider paying out, 287 Okay. okay, your serial bonds, uh, long-term debt, page 43, gives you a good rundown of what's going on there. Your bulk of that debt is 2009 bond, and then your 2012 refinancing from the 2003 bond, uh, which we were talking about earlier, which had a uh, loader and uh, fire trucks and everything else on there. So these are 30-year bonds. Some, uh, some of them are, like one of them, their original data issue uh, for the 2009 is a 25 year variable interest rate. Um, and these bonds are structured to where each period of time your debt payment, principal, and interest changes. If you look at that schedule, it's lighter on the front end and gets heavier as you go along. So it's designed to soft, you know, it's a pay me. Pay me now or pay me later? Well, everybody tries to pay later at the expense of now. You know, so. Uh, and then Web Lane, Web Lane Bridge uh, date of maturity is this year. 2015. So this budget that you guys are putting together now, you'll be making your last Web Lane Bridge payment. Until, yeah. I do question, to be honest with you, I do question why the village is involved in that in the first place, to be honest with you. So, just a 
food for thought, not to, you know, it's unusual to see the village involved. We have, and we have the pumps like on the other side yeah, of the bridge. Yeah, we have to get to the pumps. You know, we have pumping stations on the side, so that's where I can It's a private bridge. Yeah, but we have a, a, we have a line <laughs> going across the bridge, though, too. To, pay, pay a yeah. fee every year to use it, the period of time you use it. Yeah. It's just a, it's a strange way of breaking well, it up. I do, this was shared. It was half uh, all the residents on the other side and half the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I just I, I find it an unusual arrangement, but that's just me. Put a toll booth there. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's your debt. And uh, as you can see, it breaks down the serial bonds to 6.5 million. And then you have your statutory installment, which is with Lane. Okay. And your long term debt. Just shows you how your principals set up an interest annually. If you notice, it goes up. Principals go up. The interest goes up until you pay it all off. And you see how compounding, you take something like a $6 million bond and after all is said and done, $2.6 million is paid in interest to maintain that. So you can see how that adds up. Okay. Okay, uh, let's just keep going. You have another thing about fund balances again. It's kind of a rehash of what we talked about. Low SAP program, you do contribute to that uh, for the fire department, and we fund that. Uh, we got a, uh, we put in the budget, uh, we got a recommendation how much we're going to owe. OSAP. Last year we did 40, and then we had a recommendation. I thought it was around that rate. We'll re-look at it. What page is seven? Page 49 is OSAP. And again, OSAP is essentially, it's a volunteer organization. It's a little bit of a benefit program to give you something when you get vested. Okay. And your uh, low SAP plan and the value of it is on page 50. you guys get a little bit of a feel for what we did and where we're, what we're doing and uh, and for the most part it's good. Uh, no no real red flags. I had about an hour and a half meeting uh, with the auditors and we discussed a variety of things and everything seems to uh, say that everything's being fiduciarily uh, properly protected and the board is uh, protecting the village's taxpayers' money and doing it in accordance with GASP, generally accepted accounting principles, which is governmental. Okay, so that's uh, that's it. Any questions about the financial performance? No, it's a nice document. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and look, it's, it takes, if, you, if you're used to looking at these things, it's a little easier to read. If you're not, you need a little bit of guidance. Um, but I'm always available if, you, if anything comes up that you guys feel that uh, you want a little more clarification on. Um, it probably, when you look at it, you're like, wow, this is a pretty involved thing. And look, it is. It's an involved issue. Okay, You pay $20,000 for the auditors to go with a fine-tooth comb and evaluate your performance. Now, uh, they set thresholds. They don't look at every transaction. They don't look at every bill. They don't look at every claim. They do a statistical sample. 
and they go through those statistical samples, they review them. If they don't have any major discrepancies, they consider that being done properly. We did have that one avoided check issue that came up, and um, you know it was explained, explainable, uh, but we should have uh, accounted for that because we were off by f about 49,000 because of that. So we learned. So no loss of taxpayer money, just an accounting issue that we need to make sure we pay attention to. And I'm returning this copy. Okay. All right. So next up then uh, is uh, police on Monday. And uh, I'll populate the spreadsheets uh, for everybody. And, um, and I'll try to uh, you, you have that. that. What's that? The police. The police yeah, is right, right there. there. Yeah. This, this is what you handed to for the I, I just got an email at 5.30 today, so it just came out. So I'll look at it uh, this week, and I'll have it in the uh, spreadsheets for Monday. All right. Anything else? Do we need to do the document we're not doing yet? Oh, this one? Yeah. What document is that? It's for the um, Do you want micro to that? Uh, Did the or can, did the lawyer did Bill see that? Do we need to have another look yeah, at that? Yeah, I think he has. It's okay. As far as I want to talk to John, uh, we need a uh, and then we'll follow. Up. Okay. So and again, the key is that it's not going to cost us anything. But I'm okay with it if we're still up to, you know, fine. Even more, and you're going to go, you want to go to the executive session to discuss this, right? Yeah, real quick. So, is everyone in favor of moving forward uh, with the. Uh, yeah, with. Uh, uh, read it out for us, Charlie. Pardon? The motion. Um, well, I move that uh, we move forward with this exploration for microgrid. Um, with one change that John is aware of. Um, I believe it's on page 18 where it says cooperatively arrange for adequate funding or something to that effect that it doesn't say provide for. Right. Yeah. Okay. There's no village funding. Involved. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I'll go. All those in favor? I have a motion. Charlie just made a motion to uh, move forward with the the uh, Muni Grid uh, project. Um, it's a, a, it's a, a request for qualifications. That's R all it is. RFQ. RFQ. Yeah. RFQ. Okay. Otherwise, you know, With, I have for to. For RFQs for the Muni Grid pro program. Right. Okay. No all taxpayer favor? funds. No taxpayer funds. No taxpayer funds. Taxpayer funds. Right. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion to move that. So moved. Second. Also, we're in exact 